Columbus, Ohio. I'm headed your way Friday, April 12th and Saturday, April 13th. Get your tickets today. Toledo, Ohio. The Live and Alive tour is headed your way. I'll be there Friday, April 26th and Saturday, April 27th at the Funny Bone. Los Angeles. Sunday, May 12th, I'll be at the Bourbon Room for my show during the Netflix is a Joke Fest. Let's sell this thing out. Miami, Florida. I'm bringing the Live and Alive tour your way. I'll be at the Miami Improv Friday, June 7th and Saturday, June 8th. Get your tickets now. All tickets are available at ryansickler.com. Hey, baby! We're gonna be here all day! We're gonna be here all day, baby! I like this kind of party! Welcome back to The Way Back. I'm Ryan Sickler. You know me as ryansickler.com and Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Come see me on tour. Support all the shows and the specials. Um, I am very excited to have this guest here on that way back seat with me today, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Jim Florentine. Welcome to the way back. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. I love it because you walked in and you were like, I took vacations on that back seat. So before you do, plug your stuff. Let's talk about it. Uh, JimFlorentine.com is my website for all the tour dates. I do a podcast, Everybody is Awful wherever you got podcasts. And I got a couple comedy specials out on Amazon Prime and Tubi TV. Um, so tell me, you were, I know from doing the honey doing all, you're one of seven kids um, and you're a vacation family. There's no way you're flying nine people, right? So no you're way. road tripping it. We had the old school station wagon. What'd you have? Do you remember? Um, the one with the panel on the side. I forget yeah. what it was called, yeah. what the model was. The Country Squire? Country Squire, yes. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, right there. The yeah. rear-facing station wagon. So I just sent that picture to a buddy of mine the other day. I'm like, look at these kids in here with the back window. My friend last night, he came. There's the country squad. That was it. That's it. That middle one, that LTD. Yeah, yep. that's what we had. We had a brown one, just like that. And, um, yeah, and he's like, do you remember? And I didn't remember this. We were in the way back seat. His stepmother was a, a witch. And um, he said we broke the window. It was going up and down. We kept with it you know like flick, 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 yeah and it broke and he said he got he got in trouble for two <laughs> months he said <laughs> i was like i don't remember that shit, dude um so you you were always in this seat your seven kids well you yeah so here? my grandmother lived in fort lauderdale so we'd go tw two or three times a year jersey to fort, jersey lauderdale, to fort lauderdale yeah it was like 22 hours in the car straight through we'd we'd stop O overnight, like go we go to South. I remember going to South of the border. Yeah, you know, we stopped Carolina, there. Yeah, you those signs. Fireworks. Yeah, you got your fireworks, and you know you sign every 163 miles, 100. You know, so we'd always. Uh, and was Dad always driving, or Mom and Dad switch off? They would switch off. They would. All yeah. right. Yeah, they would switch off. Yeah, but the thing was, you know, there was seven kids in the family. So what my parents did, you know, because there was good seats in the car and there was bad seats. If you had that back seat facing the other way that was that was a bad seat yeah that wasn't good so my parents did whoever got the best report car would get the best seat in the car and you I, were always i never made it into the second <laughs> row <laughs> never <laughs> never wasn't even close i was in the third row <laughs> hugging the spare tire in the back yeah. looking the opposite way <laughs> never even came close um, all right. Well, I wanted to talk to you about a few things because we asked you some questions before. This is great because I, I know, again, from doing the other uh, podcast and watch Jim's episode of The Honeydew, um, you talked about going to see wrestling at the Garden. I, I would go see – my dad took us to see WWF at the Baltimore Civic Center, so I was a big wrestling kid growing up. Um, but the Garden is just like the mecca for that. You know what I mean? Uh, so what what was that like? What are you doing going to these shows? Yeah, so we'd go, you know, every month at a garden. There was a guy out front that would sell these wrestling pictures, you know. So we'd always go. The, we knew the spot where he was. It was a dollar a picture. So I'd save up my money. I was a busboy at the time. You know, I'd have like 10 bucks. Oh, good, I'd get 10 pictures. So I'd go to him every time. My dad would be with me, right, and maybe some other kids. And how came, old are you? 14. Okay. And um, we became friends. He was a wrestling photographer. He would be in the front. Take a picture. So he had really good pictures. Oh, so he was the legit guy for the WWF. I don't, or at he least didn't work for him, but he was. Arena, I, he's out there yeah. taking good stuff. So he's in the front, and he would go to Baltimore. He'd go to you know the local matches, you know, in the tri-state area, no, within three hours, yeah. and take pictures. So then he goes, "Hey man, give me your address. I'll send some to your house." I was like, "Wow, okay." So then he would send some to the house, and he's like, "I'll call you if you want to know what happened in Baltimore." 
I could call you and let you know the results. I'm like, yeah, because there was no internet. It was a wrestling magazine came out once a month and they still wouldn't put the results in there. Yeah. It didn't matter. So then he would start calling me on the phone. And uh, at one point, you know, he started breathing heavy, which was weird. You know, I was like, did you just come in from a jog? Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I'm like, so what, yeah, did yeah. Superstar Billy Graham beat Bobo Brazil? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> So then next time, I remember we went to a match and we took the train down like Asbury Park. My parents let us, me and like my 14-year-old friends, go to the match by ourselves. So we're in the nosebleed seats all the way up top. He's in the front, right, to take a pictures. So he comes up in, in between the matches. We're in a match. He goes, hey, I got two seats in the front, uh, front row. Who wants to come down there? I go, oh, I do, I do. And, and so he picked me and my friend Mike, two kids with blonde hair, blue eyes. He goes, oh, you two guys, go down. So we get down there. We get in the front row. It's still waiting for the next match to come, next guy to come out, and it's Andre. Oh, man. Andre the Giant. Yeah. So and we get right down, down there. For we get down there, and all of a sudden, I, we only see one seat. I go, what's this? No. I go, I thought there was two. He goes, somebody's got to sit on my lap. No! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, somebody's got to sit on my lap. I go, you didn't tell us. He goes, yeah, I only got one seat. And I'm like, this is weird. And my, me and Michael, like, this is weird. And then all of a sudden, we see Andre coming out. And I'm like, and he's standing like this far away from me. I'm like, oh, that Andre's right there. I'm like, oh my god. And I'm like, do I go back up? And I'm like, all right, you know what? Fine, I'll sit on your lap. Ah, they, they, <laughs> yeah, I had to. It was Andre. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go back up. Eighth wonder in the world. I gotta sit on this man. Eighth wonder in the world. This strange man's lap. <laughs> So he's holding me. He's holding me like I'm on a like I'm on a motorcycle. He's holding me like this. It's a grown man. Yeah, at least, you're a child. You know, at least I knew I wasn't gonna fall. He's holding me tight. I give him credit. And you're watching Andre just step over that top. Oh row yeah, comes over the top he's row. He's right there. He's hugging you. I'm like this is unbelievable. And he's holding me like, guy. This is weird, but I'm just looking straight ahead. I remember like this. I'm just looking. <laughs> Did you stay for the whole like Andre and out or the whole? Yeah, event? so about maybe five minutes in a match, all of a sudden I feel a nibble on my ear. Nah. I swear, I go, what's no. that? He goes, oh, sorry. I go, what the? Sorry. <laughs> I remember, I go, what's on So I get up, I go, Mike, it's your turn. You get on his lap. Your turn. You're yeah. still not leaving. <laughs> no, 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 not leaving. no, I'm not. Yeah, I'll, you know, oh, I'll be mad afterwards. I'm, it's a middle of a match. <laughs> sorry. He said it. Sorry. And then I threw my friend under the bus. Like, I should have told him, let's go back up. I just said, it's your turn to get on his lap. Oh, God. <laughs> that's so gross. <laughs> so I see him like the next month at the Madison Square Garden. He's like, hey, I can get you backstage. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because he was that? he was in the same spot every month at you know where he's outside oh. the Madison Square Garden selling pictures. So, so he brought me back. There. He goes, "Hey, give me a kiss on the cheek." I go, "Why?" Come on, dude. He goes, "Italian men do that all the time when they greet each other." Is he Italian? And I'm like, eh. "He goes, look, I'll give you I'll give you a couple pictures if you do." I go, "Which ones?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you this one. This one. I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right. I, you know, I guess Italian men do it. So I, had, I remember he had a scruffy beard. And I kissed this side and this side. Who'd you get? Who were the two pictures you got? Ken Patera. <laughs> he was fucking, I mean, he was one of my favorites. And Chief J. Strongbow and Billy White. Chief J. Strongbow, yeah. man. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, wasn't he? He was a sleeper hole. Didn't he put you out with a sleeper yeah, hole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cut to. Oh, God damn. Now he wants to come. He knows the kids in the neighborhood because my dad would bring some of the kids and me. So now he wants to come over and spend a weekend at my house because he knows the kids in the neighborhood. It's a grown man. He's 38, 14, That's big, fat guy. You know, and my dad, my my dad's like, this is weird. Why does yeah. a kid, why does a guy want to hang out with a bunch of fourteen year olds? And the other parents in the neighborhood thought it was weird oh, too. Cause they go, like, okay, you know what? Let's check this guy out, Ken, Ken Patera. Patera. Yeah. Wow, I, I'd sit on your lap for that picture if you had it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the traps on I Ken right? Tara. Jesus Christ. Unbelievable. Ken Trap Tara. God damn. Look at him. Amazing. You can't spell Patera without <clears throat> trap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, his his uh his brother was a coach. I uh, was a head coach at Seattle Seahawks. I was gonna say, back in the he, 80s. but he's wearing that U.S. singlet. Was he also? Because he was a like legit, Olympic. He was he like was, Olympic okay. uh, weightlifter. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got that Olympic body, yep. not yep. that wrestler body. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's the other thing I loved about wrestling growing up too. Was like, it didn't matter what you look like. Like Dusty Rhodes was a fat piece of shit with titties. That, and can you go, believe how big his tits were? They yeah. were you massive woman's tits, and he had no problem. I wish I had the confidence, Dusty Rhodes. Dude. He had no problem. At I'm all. gonna take that shirt off with these, those titties, and then get out there and wrestle and shake his ass and do all that and act like he's gorgeous. Look at Dusty yeah, Rhodes' look at titties. That. I know. <laughs> Early on social media, my um, daughter's mother's mom. So we never got married, so she wasn't my mother-in-law, right. but. Um, she was taking shots at me. So I was like, I'm going to say something about you on social media. And she's like, go ahead. And then I posted that picture and I said, my mother-in-law and Dusty Rhodes have the same titty. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's my mother. Well, well, I never had a mother-in-law. Right. That's her titties. Oh, right that's there. great. But look at him. Look at him in that headband and everything. Oh, no, he, he has was no totally shame confident. at all with those titties. I wish I had the confidence Didn't care of Dusty he was way Rose overweight. Like, you would never see a wrestler looking like no, that No, God, no. You wouldn't even get in the door. Now they'd be no. next. Okay, so he... So he spends the so, night. No, well, no. <laughs> well, all the parents in the neighborhood decided, let's meet this guy. Let's invite him over for dinner on a Friday night to feel him out. Is this a first, like, sort of to catch a predator episode yeah, ever? Yeah, so they bring him over, and he, he has dinner with the family, and all of the, the parents from the neighborhood come over. They have a big dinner, and they go, you know what? He seems okay. And none of you have said yet, like, well, I had to sit on his lap or I he nibbled my no, ear. I, no, no, I didn't say okay, it. All yeah, right, all right. <laughs> I kept that quiet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The guy got you me front row. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know. <laughs> you did see Andre. Though. Yeah, I did That's, see Andre yeah, that yeah, close. Yeah. So then he comes He comes in. I remember for, takes a bus from New York City on like a Friday night, and my dad picks him up. He goes, hey, can I go say hi to Jim? He goes, no, he's sleeping in the other room, so just go in the guest room. He goes, okay, I'll see him in the morning. I wake up in the morning. I got little pajamas on. He's got his hand down my pants. Get, dude, are you being for real? Yeah, I'm being for real. Right. This so fucking guy. I, I, and I wake up. I go, "What are you doing?" He goes, uh, "You know, you know." Those, Sorry. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, the pajamas had the little hole. In yeah. Them, and he had a stomach. He goes, "I'm showing you a magic trick." I go, "A magic trick? What the fuck?" He goes, "Yeah, no, I'm showing you a magic trick." I go, "This is bullshit." I go, "I'm going to go tell my brother, my older brother." He's in your room. In my room. Came in my what room. What time of morning is this? Probably eight a.m. So I was still sleeping. That is insane. There's nine people in your house. I know, but I was in the room. I, my brothers were upstairs, and I was so he found the room I was in, and they came in, and I was still sleeping. I woke up, and he was like hovering over me. So I go, I'm gonna go tell my older brothers because they were suspicious of him anyway. And I ran to the door, and he blocked the door, and he's like, "Listen," he goes, "I'll give you 30 pictures out of my wrestling <laughs> picture album if you don't no. say anything." I go, 30? He goes, yeah, I got it right here. Pick whatever ones you want. But you can't. I go, all right, that's fine. I'm not going to. He goes, you can't. I go, I won't say anything. And so I went through. I picked out 30. As soon as I got the 30, he wasn't looking. I ran out the door. I got my older brothers. They freaking grabbed. They came down down there with their friend was over, and they grabbed them, ripped them out. He's hold. I remember him holding on the door, like the side of the door. No, yeah, no. Fuck. Ripping them out, dragged them out, brought them back to the bus station, and just beat them up. And throw him back on a bus to New York City. And all the parents were like, this guy seems all right. <laughs> they seemed all right. It was crazy. And my, my brother's like, you got to tell dad what he did. I go, no. I go, because my dad's going to make me give the wrestling pictures back. <laughs> to who? Uh, <laughs> get back to him. I Hell earned no. them. I earned them. You earned <laughs> them. I had Ivan Koloff with the belt. He only had it nine days. It's too good. And then I, we found out later on that he was like on a sex offender's website. I went on a Howard Stern. <laughs> I went on a Howard Stern show when I told this story. Mm. I had at least fifteen people contact me from around the country, going, "Dude, I remember that guy. He did the same thing to me. Something similar." Jesus. And then Christ. I found him on a sex offender's website. He lives in Thailand. He's still alive. The guy. Thailand. Of yeah. course he does. Of course, he's in of course yeah. he does. I still have the pictures. So I show my kid. <laughs> it's a, he thinks it's the greatest story ever. He loves it. <laughs> I got him. In a, I go. I can't get rid of these. They're my the old wrestling picture album. Man, I I got to see Andre later, but I'll never forget. We were in elementary school. I'm young. I'm probably first second grade, and we love wrestling. And Andre is supposed to be wrestling Killer Khan in a cage match at the Civic Center.
Did you know nearly 75% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about? Between streaming services, fitness apps, and delivery service, it's never ending. Thanks to Rocket Money, there's no more wasting money on forgotten subscriptions. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all my subscriptions in one place. If I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. The dashboard shows this month's spending compared to last month, so it's clear to see spending habits. Plus, they can help create a custom budget to keep my spending on track. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash wayback. That's rocketmoney.com slash wayback, rocketmoney.com slash wayback. With that summer feeling running wild, you need hydration that keeps up with every moment. A single stick of Liquid IV makes ordinary hydration extraordinary. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. You guys know I love Liquid IV. I take it on the road. We got it here at the studio for everybody. It's easy to use. Boom, little tear it open. Throw it in a water bottle. Boom, you're set. It is the number one powered hydration brand in America. Tear. Four, live more. One stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. Non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. No artificial colors or sweeteners. Now with four delicious sugar-free flavors, you got white peach, green grape, lemon lime, and raspberry melon. Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code WAYBACK at check out. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code WAYBACK at liquidiv.com. I don't know what my brother and I did, but my dad got pissed. And he's like, sit in these chairs. You sit in these chairs and we're not going to wrestling tonight. We're like, no. And it's, but, but it's like noon. And right no, I ain't going to do that. We're going to wrestling tonight. And we're sitting in these chairs all day long. We keep like looking out the screen door. He's out back working and shit. Two o'clock, four o'clock, we're like, Dad, he's like, we're not going. And looking back now, I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. Like, fuck, I don't want to take these two motherfuckers to the Civic Center. I'll drive down there and park and tickets and all that. This one time, I'm going to take the night off, and he fucking did. We never fucking went. We never went. No, oh, we sat in those chairs all fucking night. We thought he was bull. I think he felt bad after that because he never stayed to a punishment after that again. Right. But, man, I missed that one. But I, I also remember, I'm positive it was Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Liberty High School. Well, they would have, they, you know, they would have little matches at the high schools. Would they? They would. Yeah. Okay, would. I'm not crazy. The, the I high feel school like it, I went to, they had Ken Patera versus Ivan Putski. Yeah, the Polish power. Yeah, he was the first so, guy I saw flex his titties. When I was 15, they they had the wrestle match in my the high school I went to. Right, it was Ken Patera versus Ivan Putski was the headline match. So they would do the high schools. You would think that the WWE was right. so big, but they wanted they would do the high schools. So I knew where they would come out because I knew the high school. So I went around back after the matches after the wrestle was over, see if I can get an autograph or a picture. And I'll never forget, I saw Ivan Putski and Ken Patera get in the same car and drive away. And I go to my dad, I go, Why? how could they get in the same car? They're, they hate each other. They just fought each other. He had to break it to me. That it was fake. I cried. <laughs> At 15, I cried on the way home. I remember the first time my dad would always come and be like, whoever came in second. He's like, this, so-and-so is going to win. I'm like, how does he fucking know this every time? And then as I started getting older one day, because I started you know, wrestling, fighting, playing sports and stuff, he goes, I go, it's not fake, Dad. He goes, let me ask you a question. I grab you by the arm and I throw you against the ropes. What are you doing? I go, I'm going to grab on the ropes and hold on. He goes, mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> no. That's a good way like, of breaking it. That's a good way of breaking it to him. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to go, okay, I'm going to bounce into him. I don't I'm know what he's going to do to me. He's got his foot up like this, line. but I'm yeah, going to go right in your yeah, foot. Right. But my dad worked at the airport, so he was the crew chief for Pan Am. And I also remember him one time coming home with the junkyard dogs autograph because they had his, he's like, oh, he had his bags and the chains. He was flying with the chains and he, he got, he would get his junkyard dogs 
autograph. Nice. Yeah, it was it was a good times, man. Wrestling back in the day. Did you ever build a ring? Did you ever build your own ring? No, never did that. Dude, we built a ring behind our house right in the edge of the wood. Like, it was in the woods, but it was the edge of our property. And we go back there, and we would fuck each other up. Like, it was just mud, and we had a piece right. of plastic down and some sticks in the corner of ropes. And we would fuck. We'd come out to walk up music and stuff, everybody right. in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we never did that. Kirsten was asking about crank anchors and practical jokes and stuff, and you said that you used to um, call friends out of school. Yeah, because, you know, I had a deep voice. Like yeah, ninth, when grade, did you, yeah, well, ninth. Yeah. ninth grade, ninth yeah. grade. You, you remember it? Changing. I remember it because everyone was making fun of me. You wake up one day and you even hear it yourself. Yeah, you and then I'd walk down the hallway. Everyone would go say something. I'm like, what? Like, ah! You know, or if I got called on in class, what's the answer? It's like uh, 72. They'd all start laughing. And you just sounded like this forever. Yeah, sound like yeah. <laughs> this is ninth grade. Yes, yeah, ninth grade. Right ninth grade. <laughs> My dad sounded like this. My dad had a deep voice too, yeah. so I got it from him. But um. So when, whenever we um, stay home from school, you know, we just cut class or whatever, go to a friend's house, I'd have to call. So I'd call as their parents. This is Mr. Bondi. Uh, Tony won't be in school today. He's sick, so he'll be in tomorrow for sure. So I'd call everybody out. With my and they'd never, you know, everyone was like, dude, you got to call me out. Sometimes I'm like in the morning before I'm ready, I'm running to go to school. My friend Kevin will call, dude, call, can you call me out today? And who you call? Like the, the, the secretary at the office yeah, the or whatever's answering the, office, the phone? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, uh, Kevin Corrigan. This is Mr. Corrigan. He won't be in today. So, uh, I'm like, okay, thanks. Be in. Okay, thank you. And it's that easy. down. And so, boom. I was the guy they went to to do it because I had the voice. Did you ever get caught? No, never got caught. But we'd always stay home from school. Like, we pretend we're at the bus stop. Our parents would drop us off. Then we'd go hide in the bushes. I remember my friend's house. We'd hide in his bushes until his mom went to work like 45 minutes later. We'd be sitting in the bushes, <laughs> just shivering. hanging out, <laughs> shivering. 45 yeah, because about 45 minutes later, she'd get in the car. And we knew where she worked. She was a dental hygienist, so we just wait. And then as soon as she went in, and then there'd be three other kids from the neighborhood, and we'd just have a big card game and, you know, the whole time. That and sounds just, great. We oh, never was did great. any shit. We didn't do that till high school was when we would start doing that. Yeah, it was high school. Yeah. It was maybe, eight, yeah, about ninth to tenth grade. We'd skip. If somebody had a pool, we'd go over there for the summer and swim. Like, fuck class today. We're out of here. You made me remember this. Uh, so my friend, Miss Sandy, was like a mom to me growing up. And um, she had a daughter named Kelly who was like a sister who uh, passed away. But before she did, she was in high school. I was a little older. And she got in some kind of trouble. And she just lied and said that her – she lied to the school and said her father's name was Roger Patterson. And it's really Roy. Like, I knew that they were like a second family to me. So I happened to be over there one day, and I walk in the middle of her mom being really upset with whatever happened, you know. And she's like, and then you lied? And she's like, I did. And she's like, you, you said your dad's name's Roger Patterson. Like, you know. So I was like, can I ask you a question? She's like, what? And I go, if I take that phone call and I act like I'm Roger Patterson and I just calm the lady down, just will you, will you let me try it? She goes, if you get caught. I go, well, then she's getting in way more trouble. Right. And you can say you didn't even know about this. She's like, okay. And I took that call and I just did what I just was like, mm -hmm. you're absolutely correct, ma'am. My son will be appropriately disciplined. We are very disappointed. Just kept doing that shit. And this lady calmed down. Like she could hear her yelling over here, calm yeah. down. I was like, I'm like, if actually, if you want to uh, escalate this, we're all for it. We'll meet you at the school. And she's like, we don't need to do that. <laughs> And boom, right out of it. I was nice. like, holy shit, that fucking That's work. Right. Right at work. Yeah. <laughs> I only did that once. I would never have the balls to do that. But what we would do, like my, I have a twin brother. We sound alike. So he would, I wouldn't know it, but girls would call the house and he'd be like, you're going to the movies with Deb tomorrow. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he would act like he was me. Oh, really? Yeah. And then tell him I'm taking you to the <laughs> movies tomorrow and shit. I'm like, you fucking asshole. So then what would happen? You would tell, listen, that was my brother. I'm like, yeah. Dad, I can't take tell him. But then I'd go to the movies anyway and hang out. But like, that's him. That's him. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me about like winters, because I know you um you had you definitely had snowball fights and shit. Oh, snowball fights. 
Yeah, always. Well, snowball fights, and then we also throw snowballs at cars. That's what I want to talk about. Which is so dangerous. So dangerous. I mean, it's insane how dangerous. we Because we, they never knew where they were coming. We weren't standing, like, right on the, on the sidewalk and throwing them as they went by. We were hiding in the woods. Yeah. We had good arms. We were all baseball players yeah. and stuff. I was a pitcher. So we were hiding. So they had no... Imagine just driving, like, 25 miles an hour. So like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you don't know yeah. where it comes from. Right. Scary as shit. There was a couple yeah. times, uh, you know, a guy had his window open, even though it was the winter time, I remember going through it, hitting him, and went through the window, the passenger window, hit him. And we always had a route. We knew we did it between two houses, and the woods was right there. So as soon as a car stopped and someone got out, which a lot of times would happen, we just run in the woods. They would never find us. Never. We used to do it all the time. You know what we used to do, too? We had a deep freezer in the basement. So in March, we'd pack a bunch of snowballs, and we'd throw them in the deep freezer. Oh, the, so some of those are ice balls. Bro, but, but, yeah. hey, but, but forget March. July, you're just getting hit with a fucking snowball on the side of the head. You're like, where the Real. fuck did you get that? We're like, March, motherfucker. You guys you froze them? <laughs> we would freeze them and hit you in the, the summer. summer. I'm like, I didn't even think about that. You can't throw that back. No. You know what I mean? There ain't no fun. There's no snow right. for you to fight back. And we're just, God, God, God. Like, where the fuck did you get that? March, motherfucker. That's where we got it. My cousin and I, one time, this one still scared the shit out of me. Talk about how dumb it was. And then when you realize, like, oh, fuck. It was Thanksgiving again, and we're in Baltimore City, and we're in Highland Town. They got Eastern Avenue, sort of like the Ventura Boulevard. You know, it runs for a while. Yeah. But there's an overpass there, so we decide to go up. And it's, it doesn't usually snow at Thanksgiving, but it's coming. It's sticky. And, we're, you know, as soon as it snows, you grab it to see, and we're like, boom, we're hitting each other. So we start packing them up, and we're looking over the thing. We're like dropping a couple, like you said, from overhead, so dangerous. And this fucking city bus comes. You know those windshields are as big as that window right there. And we just pop, pop, pop. This dude fucking hits the brakes. Bus starts sliding sideways. We're like, oh, my God. Whole city bus go, Aah! We're like, oh, my God. We just fucking took off running. We were scared to You guys death. never got caught? No, no. Well, we got caught. I've told this story before. My... We used to play capture the flag in the woods in the winter, but we go aggressive. And if you were on the other team, you know what that is? No. So capture the flag is like, let's say there's five uh, guys over there and there's five of us. We got a blue flag. They got a red flag. They have to hide their flag. We have to hide ours. And the job is for us to go hunt and find their flag, get it, and then bring it safely back to our side. Okay. Right? And in the meantime, it's anything fucking goes. So they're going to be coming your way. And if we would catch you, we'd tie you up, make you a prisoner. So we they caught my brother one time, tied him to a tree. And then we just start, while we're bored, we're just bombing cars over the hill while we're waiting for right. anybody else. And we hit this pickup truck. Dude fucking skids, like you say, he gets out. He leaves his car. This dude left his car right in the middle of the fucking street. He was so pissed. And he trudges up this hill. And we're like, oh, my God. And we were scared to death. We run. We all hide. My brother's just sitting there with his arms tied. Guys, you fucking throw a snowball. My brother's like, do you think I can throw a snowball at you? I'm tied up. He's like, I don't give a shit. And he packed the snowball. And he fucking right nailed him right in the head. And I was like, fuck. As yeah. your brother was tied up against the tray. <laughs> yeah. And he screamed like, you son of a bitch. And he walked yeah. down, got in his truck and drove away. <laughs> Yeah. Well, lucky it it's wasn't. Was, we lucky caught. it wasn't a deliverance moment for your brother. <laughs> <laughs> He's tied to the tree. <laughs> oh wow. shit! Wow. Yeah, dude. I know because we throw them over and over past too. You know how dangerous that yeah, is. You kill someone easily. Yeah, though. yeah. It's amazing that but nothing, nothing like that ever happened to us. Um, we'd also do uh, bumper. You know, it'd be snowing. There'd yeah. be like three inches on the road. Cars would be driving by, and we'd run behind them and hold on to the bumper and just. And ski. are you are you staying or skiing on your feet like on your that? Feet. Yeah, just holding like this and just go, and just holding on to the bumper as they're going. <laughs> yeah, here it is, right? Yeah, here. <laughs> so dangerous. The cars were going faster than that <laughs> yeah, in our I'm neighborhood. Way faster. Yeah, and they didn't even know. Like we just, we didn't even know who's, who was driving the car. They didn't even know that we you just jump grab on, on and go just jump like skateboard kids would yeah. back in the day. But you're doing it on your feet, not a sled or anything no, like that. Huh? Feet. And then at some point, you know, you just fall off and you roll whatever or if they have to make a turn or they start speeding up. But all right, look, I'm going to make you tell a story you've told me before just because I love it. Tell me the story about what happened with your brother. And it was a construction, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 We're doing construction. I hated it. You know, I was bored. I'm like, I don't want to do this stuff. And my brother's like, hey, close off this pantry, you know, put some sheetrock up. You know, we're fixing up these old houses, he's going to resell them. So I'm like, all right, so we had to put sheetrock up and, um, you know, just close the whole little area off of off a kitchen. So before they did that, I go, hey, you know, I'm just in there. And I'm like, eh. 
So I got a black magic marker. I remember like a big mark. And I just wrote this whole note on the wall. I go, hey, my name is, I forget what the name I used, but I go, I used to live in this house and I dated it like five years before or something. I go, I lived in this house and, um, you know, my grandmother got really sick and we didn't have a lot, a lot of money and I didn't know what to do. I wanted to take care of her. And, uh, you know, she got really sick. She was in a lot of pain. So I wound up killing her to get her out of pain and I didn't have any money for a funeral. We didn't have any family. Any, so I buried her under the house, under the crawl space. So if someone ever finds this, could you please give it a proper burial? <laughs> and I went under the crawl space and I put a stick like a cross. I made a cross. That's with, what it and is. I made a cross and I stuck it like I crawled way back there in the dirt and I stuck it in there way in the corner. So they got a flashlight from back here. Yeah. Like, oh, there it is. Yeah. I'm like, I might as well go. You know, if I'm going to do yeah. the joke, I might as well. I got to put a cross, too. Yeah. I remember the one of the other construction workers like that's fucked up. And then we just closed it off, painted it. And that was it. And then cut to like five years later. I'm living down in Florida at the time. My brother's like, hey, dude. He goes, uh, we got a problem. I go, what's the problem? He goes, you know that? Remember you wrote that note? Because my brother knew I did it. He goes, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, remember that note you wrote? He goes, yeah, well, the cops came to my house. And they want you to fly back to New Jersey because they want to question you. I go, about, I go, you told them I did it? He goes, yeah. He goes, I got a family. I'm not going to, you know, he goes, I'm, it's, I'm not going to take the blame for it. He's like, yeah, man, you got to come back. They're really mad, and there could be some charges. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, dude, you killed. And then he started laughing. He goes, no, but what happened was the cops, when someone bought the house, and they took that wall down, and they found it. They cut the piece of sheetrock out, brought it to the police station, and they, they traced it where the sheetrock was was brought in like 1988 or whatever it was. they could trace that. They traced it when it was rock. born. So, you know, when it was whoever bought that, then they look back to who owned the house. My brother owned the house that time, and they showed up my brother's house. He just had a baby. He's married. And they knocked on his door. First, they knocked on my mom's door, my parents' door. And they go, my, Joe lives around the corner. And they went to my brother Joe's house and knocked on goes, what's going on here? They go, we got a, we got an ex um, cops there. They're digging under the house right now. They, they got it all roped they off. Yeah, it. They're starting to excavate. They go, so what's going on with this thing? We need to know. <laughs> I remember I was like, holy shit. Five years later, he always got it. He goes, he goes listen, man, I just I just remember. He goes, it's, there's nobody there. He goes, <laughs> we had a bunch of guys on the construction site. They were just they were just messing around. It was a big prank. I remember him doing that. He's like, what's the, we need games. He goes, I can't remember. It was just guys, I, I don't know. They only worked for me like a month or two. And they're like, they go, well, they're going to make sure that there's nobody. He goes, I'm telling you, there's not. So they, well, I guess they wound up checking and it wasn't, but. Dug this hole out. Yeah, they were they got it roped off. There's Poltergeist. A, this place, yeah, yeah, they had to go under there. The guy, the guy, imagine finding that. Like, holy shit, there's a dead body under my house. Yeah. He cut the yeah. sheet rock out and brought it to yeah. the police station. <laughs> Look what some maniac wrote. <laughs> why? And to this day, why would I do that? For what reason? <laughs> Seriously, I don't know. There's absolutely zero reason to do something like that. And yeah, because you don't even know if you'll be alive when it pays off. It could have been 50 years before I didn't even think it was going to pay yeah. off or someone was ever going to take that wall down and oh, then go under there and then put a, a cross under the crawl space. And crawl. I remember crawling in the dirt. I was all dirty. So like, good. I got to put it way in the back. In the way back, bro. In the way back. <laughs> Where we are. Dude, thank you for doing this. This is awesome. No um, problem, man. Please Thanks, promote everything you like again. JimFlorentine.com, my website. Check out my comedy specials up on Amazon Prime and uh, Tubi TV. There it is. Everybody, Ryan Sickler on all your social media, ryansickler.com. Thank you for all your support. Come see me on the road. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm -hmm.